everybody and welcome to this special video as you can see I'm not in my normal appearance normal attire just wasn't feeling it for this video um, this video is going to be a little bit different than some of the other stuff that I've posted before not too super educational not too super touching on the historical parts of things I just wanted to share with you guys um, some of the more intimate parts of my altar space um, and that means a lot to me, uh, for me to want to share it with you guys and uh, maybe give you some ideas of things that you can do to accentuate your altar space. Um, you know, this is, this is a sacred space for me um, and I keep it the way you're going to see it now uh, for the most part at any given time if I do any sort of ritual or if I do any sort of, you know, uh, loads or practice or anything that I do for my spirituality um, things may change or differ but um, I know a lot of people out here especially newcomers to heathenry are a little bit lost when it comes to what do I do how do I set up my altar what kind of things can I put on there that sort of thing you have to figure it out for yourself you have to do things that are going to work for you um, and the kind of heathenry that you're following what kind of pagan path that you're following um, but I did just want to give you guys a little bit of an insight or show you what I've got on mine. And believe it or not, this altar space that I'm about to show you has evolved. Um, and I think that most pagans out here that watch this would agree that your altar space will never stay consistent. It will never stay static. Um, things will be added, maybe removed, changed around, repositioned, that sort of thing. You're going to see it evolve in different ways based on your growth and based on how you are uh, following your, your heathen practices. So I'm going to go ahead and redirect down here again to my altar space just to show you a little bit um, how I have it set up, what I have it set up, maybe some things that you can add to it. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and check out my altar space. All right, so this is basically what you're going to see at my altar. I'm going to start over here uh, on the left hand side, uh, do my best anyway, to start from the left hand side and work my way over to the right and give you as much detail about things as I have here uh, as I possibly can, okay? So coming down over here, starting here on the left hand side we have a pretty unique blade. Um, this is a knife that was given to me by my aunt and it was obtained by her brother who was serving as a marine um, uh, and, and doing some training in Cambodia. Um, this is a handmade handcrafted blade there's nothing else quite like it on the planet there may be things that look similar to it um, but it is one in and of itself it is very unique um, the blade and everything that you see, uh, the blade runs totally through to the handle and it is made from an old leaf spring off of a U.S. Army Jeep. So the blade is very strong and durable. And as I was told, these blades were used uh, by the natives of that land to, uh, you know, cultivate things with and do things with. They would split open coconuts, they would, you know, work their various crafts or whatever, uh, and they would have blades like this to... Um, you know work things with as you can hopefully see um, it is a very it's a pretty thick blade um, and it's and it's front heavy you know so it's got that that weight that carries down through it um, and I did add a uh, Tiwaz rune to it I did burn a Tiwaz rune into the handle this is my dedication to uh, Tyr um, being a god of war um, a, a god of justice a god of right action a warrior God, one of the Aesir, you know, um, I felt like this was a very nice uh, representation or respect to Tyr, who I uh, like to work with in my pagan practices, okay? Um, and then over here we have a candle holder. I haven't added all the candles yet. Um, I've burned some, as you can see, some, uh, you know, some knot work and stuff into it. I have Othala burned into all the ends. Um, and this binder in that you see, if I just hold it upright, as you can see, there's, um, 
this is my own special bind rune, okay? I created this bind uh, to honor my family on both my maternal and paternal side. So my mother and my father's uh, surnames are honored in this bind rune. And this is a rune to connect my families, my ancestors. This is a, this is a candle holder that is dedicated solely to my ancestors, okay? Um, hence the Othala rune, and hence that special bind rune that I had made. So this is something, the, the, the wooden candle holder itself was gifted to me by my mother uh, last year, and I added those things to it. So this is my ancestral candle. This is the candles that I light for my ancestors uh, when and as I work with them uh, in my practices, okay? Next we have this Benjamin Thorpe version of a uh, Hovamol. It's just the translation, the Thorpe translation of the Hovamol. It's a little chewed up on the corners, but um, this was given to me as a gift uh, several years ago by my wife. So I like that. And then this really nice book. Um, I actually read uh, a story out of this book a few videos ago. Um, was gifted to me by my uh, heathen brother, one of the very few people who I refer to as brother uh, to me. Um, really neat take on the old stories. Um, this book is over a hundred years old and it stayed within his family and he gifted it to me on my birthday this year, so very, very special to me. Um, moving over here to my to this candle holder, actually the little candle burnt out uh, a little bit, but this is a really, really nice piece. You guys can see the Midgard Musings bind rune has been uh, burned into the corners. It's also an incense burner, so it's like a tea light candle uh, holder. And on the front side of it, I'm going to raise it up just a little bit so you can see, and burned around it is a representation of Jormungandr, the world serpent, right? So I'm just going to flip it around. You can see it's just very simple kind of serpentine scales, uh, nothing too, too elaborate, but really, really awesome. Um, and this was gifted to me by uh, a fella who I'm going to link his Etsy store down in the uh, description of the video. It's uh, Heathen's Greetings US. Uh, some of you may know J.M. Olufsen. Um, he is a uh, chieftain um, of the uh, Urderdupt kindred up in North Carolina so check out his uh, craft store he does wonderful work um, he does a lot of rune work um, all the stuff I believe that he works with as far as the wood comes from his property uh, or nearby properties things that he's you know cultivated himself really awesome guy glad to be friends with him so check his store down in the description below okay moving along up up front here I have um, this really neat piece, which was gifted to me way back uh, in the early days of Midgard Musings, when this channel was pretty much first starting, and I say early days like it was a long time ago, it was like about a little over a year ago uh, or so, and uh, this gentleman gifted this to me um, and has burned the Midgard Musings bind rune in it, and then on the reverse uh, or opposite side, uh, he burned the runes that... Um, I mean Othrir, the meat of poetry. So this is, means something very important to me. Othrir is, uh, we hear about it in the lore, and uh, you know, means means a lot to me. So that stays on my altar. Uh, this is a neat little piece of lava rock from Iceland. I have not been to Iceland, but um, a former co-worker who I used to work with did uh, visit Iceland and he knew the kind of stuff that I was into and he brought this back uh, during his visit. So, um, means a lot that it came from that part of the world and it stays on my altar. This is also another neat piece. Um, this is my oath ring. Um, I wanna say it's either bronze or, can't remember exactly, it might be just iron and cast or whatever, but it's a really neat piece that I got at a local um, Pagan Festival. Um, it was a Nashville Pagan Pride. Um, 
If I can find the details of where I got this from, I may link it down in the description, but I'm not too sure because this guy only had an Instagram and I don't remember his name or what his Instagram was, um, but he, he was pretty seclusive or reclusive uh, about his stuff and didn't have like a business card or anything. So if anybody who was at Nashville Pagan Pride sees this and recognizes this, feel free to comment down below um, with where other people may be able to acquire said piece, okay? Moving on up, I've got some candles lit. Uh, these three candles up front, these candles, again, that middle one uh, burnt out, some of the waxes, uh, I guess just, you know, finally burning away. Need to get some more tea light candles, but I have some driftwood pieces uh, with runes on these. Um, this is obviously the uh, Fehu rune. This is the Ing or Ingvaz rune, and here is the Ansus rune. So these are candles uh, that I have in, uh, on my altar for dedications or representations of Ansus is Odin, Ingvaz is Freyr, and Feu is Frigg. Um, these are representations of those gods to me. And uh, they are all up front uh, behind the main candle. The main candle doesn't really have any special markings or anything on it, but it does, um, you know, provide the the fire for for ritual things that I do myself. Now on the back side here, um, this is just a simple uh, goose feather to add to the nature aspect. This is a neat. Uh, piece. This is, I've had these uh, deer antlers. This is just a white tailed deer um, antlers and, and, and deer skin. Um, but I, I I added a rune to it. You know, Freyr is one who I like to work with given the fact that I like being outdoors. I like gardening, agriculture, that sort of thing. So this is another strong dedication to Freyr, um, the, the nature aspects and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, moving on, here is my dedication to Thor. Uh, this hammer that you see is an actual sledgehammer that um, used to be my, my father's. Uh, this is a working hammer that he had in his toolbox that he would just let me have. And I um, kind of cleaned it up and stained it a little bit and added Thor sauce to it. So this is my ritual hammer. I have a small acorn with Thor sauce burned into it as an, uh, a, a, an homage to Thor. I have my very first Mjolnir that I've ever owned or, or worn sitting in front of this beautiful um, statue of Thor. Now I'm going to move his hammer, excuse me buddy, and as you can see he is holding a, a hammer. I'm going to raise him up just a little bit to show you. Um, this is a piece that is made by Matt Petrie over at Odin's Beard Woodworking. You can find details for his store. Um, and his website down in the description. I definitely encourage you guys to please check out his wood burnings, or excuse me, wood uh, carvings, because um, this is an aged uh, sort of look. He does painted colored, he does natural looks, natural stains, and, but I mean, my camera doesn't do it justice, but the detail, yeah, it's not gonna really even do it justice. The detail, Guys, he, he takes, and all these are, like, like, no power tools touch his his items. This is all handcrafted, hand-carved. He does little pocket-sized uh, items like this, and he does things up to, I think, like a foot in length or height, whatever you want to look at it. But this is my little Thor. You know, he stays on my altar. He goes with me, too. When I travel and when I go places, he goes with me. Um, so when bloat is made or, or offerings are given to Thor, I make sure to, to give some to him in my own way. So... That's really awesome. Um, from, from the back here now, uh, this is a very special piece that my wife gifted to me. Um, it's, a, it's a wooden uh, item with a vial of her blood. Um, and with, with, my, with my blood, I pledge my eternal love. Um, I'm not going to read the back just because it's very private, um, but I have, it, I have this set forward in front uh, to me at all times. Um, so this always stays... Um, on my altar because that is her gift to me and I value that greatly. Of course we have deer antlers again as a nod to Freyr um, and the offering bowl that you see here I have this cup a little piece of incense stick but this cup is you know with uh, Othala on it this is 
something I use for some dry offerings uh, that I like to give to my ancestors and this is my bloat bowl which has some roughly burned or crude carved uh, runes that go all the way around it the Thor's hammer in the front and Gabo in the center so this is my bloat bowl this is what is dedicated strictly for uh, gifting to the gods and ancestors um, this cup again is is for my ancestors another nice gift from my wife that she made burned and stained um, the date that we you know kind of became official uh, our names and the Barkana, the Gabo and Ewas runes which mean a lot to her and I um, these are runes that we drew together um, at a very pivotal point in our lives and they mean a lot to us so uh, these are our runes and then lastly, I have my rune box, which you guys have seen in a recent video with my runes in it. The box again comes as a gift from my wife. So, again, the layout of things may change slightly depending on what I'm doing at the time. Um, but this is basically what, what you see is what you got. Um, so... Let me go ahead and go back up so that way I can talk to you guys for the next few minutes um, about what you've seen. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and maybe have found it helpful. So stick around. I've got a few more things to talk to you about and I will be right back. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, there you have it. Um, Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out my Heathen Altar space. Um, again, this is my space. This is my sacred space. Maybe what I've shown you gives you some inspiration or ideas. Hopefully, the things that you've seen that are handcrafted, that are handmade by folks that I know, all the details for which should be down in the description by now, um, hopefully you've checked them out. Maybe there are things there um, with those folks. Um, that can accentuate your heathen altar space or your pagan altar space. There is a lot of weight, I feel, in supporting um, our heathen communities and especially those who are doing this to support their families and themselves. I think there's a lot of good, uh, you know, good weird to be tied uh, there in, in our modern time. So it's a great way to support others, uh, support their families, and in the meantime, you can also get really great items that are accentuating your altar space. They are handcrafted, there is a lot of effort put into it. It's not something that's just mass produced in an assembly line in some warehouse or something. So there's power there. Um, so thank you guys for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Midgard Musings if Norse paganism, Germanic paganism, Germanic heathenry, whatever you want to call this, also true. Um, anything, whatever name you want to put to this. If it's something that you enjoy and it's something that you want to see more of, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you don't want to miss anything, click the bell for notifications. Thank you all again so much for watching today's video. Hail, and I'll see you next time.